Solange is joining us as well to have a look at what's uh, grabbing the news headlines around the world. Solange, you're um, starting on you with this sombre effect of uh, the coronavirus here in France. Um, it's plunged one million more people, incredible figure, into poverty. Yeah, it is a sombre statistic and actually a heartbreaking one as well. Uh, before the pandemic, nine million people in France lived below the poverty line. Uh, and Le Monde tells us that since COVID-19, one million, as you said, more uh, are now live below the poverty line. And the paper notes that that estimate is actually a low ball figure with 800,000 more jobs expected to be lost by the end of the year. So it's likely to get worse for many students, el the elderly, part-time workers, for example, according to La Croix. Now, the paper explains that those are the people who aren't necessarily getting unemployment or those for whom the ben their benefits have run out. Uh, they are now in increasingly relying, La Croix says, on uh, food banks, uh, which the charity food banks say that their demand, demand for food aid, has jumped by 30 percent. Of course, food insecurity, hunger, I mean, they were already, weren't they, a global issue before coronavirus. The pandemic just making it a lot worse. Yeah, some feel that hunger is sort of the next front uh, line of the coronavirus. Uh, Le Figuel writes today about hunger and how it is the collateral damage of COVID in Africa in particular. The paper says that hunger that could now affect 250 million more people, and that that could spike child mortality across the continent, uh, with the world focused on sort of the coronavirus vaccine, preventative health measures, food aid, and vaccine campaigns for other diseases have largely, according to Le Figo, been falling to the wayside. Pretty heart-wrenching stuff. Let's move on uh, now to what uh, to uh, look, perhaps blindingly, I'll leave it up to you to decide, on the bright side. Yeah, the British press says that Boris Johnson's speech yesterday was looking at the world with rose-tinted glasses. The conservative paper, The Daily Express, has chosen to sort of push that positive vibe on its front page, quoting the prime minister's optimism, saying that Britain would come out of the coronavirus pandemic in fighting form. But for The Guardian, Johnson has not only, quote, badly misjudged the mood of the nation, but the paper says his, quote, tone deaf lies fall flat in a Britain that is reeling from the coronavirus. The paper argues that British citizens have become wiser and warier of false promises. Now, for Politico, the speech was, quote, heavy on the post-crisis ambition and light on engagement with the nation's clear and present problems, end quote. Or, as Steve Bell hints in his cartoon, the speech was full of hot air. Here, the Guardian cartoonist is referring to Johnson's pledge that offshore wind farms will power every home in the UK by 2030. But the gas mask wearing rats looking on on the corners there uh, may allude, may have be Steve Bell alluding to the fact that perhaps something smells fishy about, <laughs> about uh, Johnson's speech. Another flattering uh, image there of Boris Johnson. Now, let's move to American politics for this next one. This is about a, a teenager making waves online. Yeah, the, the American, the U.S. press is all abuzz about a 15-year-old named Claudia Conway. Now, she is the daughter of Trump's former advisor, Kellyanne Conway, and George Conway, who is actually a prominent never-Trumper and one of the co-founders of the Lincoln Project. Now, as Vanity Fair tells us, uh, her, uh, this, her, their daughter has long been followed on TikTok, asking for emancipation from her parents, for example, and outing the, her, her mother's... Uh, uh, her mother's coronavirus um, results. Well, Elle magazine explains that Twitter's going crazy about the, her latest tweets, uh, uh, which are about the health, uh, the real state of the health, according to her, of Donald Trump. And many online are calling her the ultimate whistleblower. But New York Magazine says that, that this is just a case, uh, according to them, of a rebellious teenager pushing back against her parents, that everyone should back off and grow up, that this isn't Harry Potter, and that, quote, our salvation doesn't rest with a young adult, our salvation is our job, end quote. I think there's a book and a film in that one to come. <laughs> um, Solange is going to uh, talk about another young adult who's gone viral, but this is one here in Paris, isn't it? Yeah, it's a modern-day film, you'd have to mm. say. Uh, this, <laughs> this one is uh, about Emily in Paris. I haven't yeah. had a chance to discuss the craziness in the press <laughs> over Netflix's new uh, show of an American in Paris. Uh, and as Van Minute tells us, uh, the, it, the show is full of stereotypes that, according to the paper, are complete, and uh, to me as well, I, I think this is true, they, they, there are plenty of stereotypes that are completely off mark. For example, in real life in Paris, Chambre de Bonne, or maids' apartments, 
are not 50 meters squared, <laughs> and it is unlikely that you will see lots of people wearing berets. But the paper says that the cliches are, for better or worse, part of a long tradition of Franco-American love-hate. And it argues that shows like this sell, that people are gobbling it up, with some in the U.S. saying, ah, since we can't get to Paris, the best, this is the best replacement. But the French celebrity site Conbini tells us that there's been quite a lot of complaining in France about it, too, with French people here asking, is that really how Americans see us? And others lamenting flat characters, all by good-looking ones, and no plot. <laughs> Love it or hate it, it does make you think about uh, the magic of Paris and what it holds for people. I saw a very quick clip. It does look very pretty. Um, but it as long as your baguette and your beret have slipped behind the desk, because everyone in Paris has a beret and a baguette oh, yes. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> We just take them off to come on air. So as with the papers and uh, Stephen earlier with uh, Business on France 24. Next half hour of the programme, uh, after the scandal six years ago when around 20 of the young people living in the small French town of Lunel travelled to Syria to join the Islamic State group. We're going to be reporting on what the town has done since to ensure such a thing never happens again. That's our focus uh, report for you in the next half hour of the programme.